Infowars.com, because there is a war on for your mind. And speaking of a war on for your mind and taking action, Janae Girard is a hero. She's one of the six plaintiffs in the last two and a half year battle against some of the biggest biotech companies out there. And, and they're not getting money. They weren't plaintiffs for judgments. She wanted to be able to get this test for breast cancer and was unable to get it. And she has been basically the poster child, the person willing to work the hardest so that justice be served to America and the rest of the world. And last week they had the ruling. And here's the ruling right there. It's the size of a good sized town's phone book. Uh, and her Facebook is uh, Janae.Gerard and Twitter, Janae Gerard, just twitter.com forward slash Janae Gerard. And uh, YouTube is beyond the booby trap. Uh, and she joins us here today. We're going to break here in a few minutes. You're in Austin tonight. We're honored to have you. Uh, congratulations. It shows that justice can prevail and that all is not lost. Uh, tell people in a nutshell about the case and about the ruling. Well, basically, uh, this happened just recently. And um, in, you know, in the Supreme Court, this case went all the way up from federal to the Supreme Court. What that means um, is that uh, women everywhere will now be able to get the BRCA1 and BRCA2 breast cancer test, and it won't cost $3,600. They believe that now the monopoly is broken, the test will drop to about $150. So um, now Myriad is prevented from actually owning a part of the body. So what that means for the whole U.S. is that all the other companies that were getting ready to patent genes, which was about 22 in the queue, uh, those biotech companies can't patent other parts of the body that revolve around hearing loss, you know, um, MLS, uh, eyesight. So there are a bunch of medical. Yeah, they could patent a treatment, but 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 you can't patent the body. That's right, but they did. So this overturns that. Wow, it's like Monsanto's told companies, okay, you found our our chemicals and and things in the honeybees. You can't do a test. We own that chemical in the bee. That's right. It's amazing. Yeah, it really is. One of the judges made a, a lot of sense when he said, you can pluck a leaf off of the tree, but it's still fundamentally part of the tree. It's the same thing. You can bring a, your DNA or a piece of the DNA, you know, out of the body, but it's still, it's still part of the body. Well, that's what Monsanto's doing is they go take corn, they change it, then it infects everything. And then when they infect your crop and it's, then they come after you and the court rules it's okay because they own the judges. But right. the, this is a big deal to them, too. Yeah, it really is. It really is. This is one of the biggest Supreme Court rulings, positive ones, I've ever seen in my lifetime. Uh, I mean, you've got to really feel good. When that ruling came down, what did it feel like? I was, I, I was ecstatic. I mean, I've, you know, I've put probably, well, myself and the other five plaintiffs have been a part of this uh, for over two and a half years. And we had 150 friends of the court, um, which was a lot of medical associations and people that wanted to block, you know, this genetic patenting. So um, it was a really big deal. It, it, was, uh, it was exciting to be a part of history. The important thing about the Pro One filter today is that the material we use for removing fluoride and other heavy metals now will remove the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. There's no other fluoride reduction filter out there that will remove that type of fluoride. And it's extremely important because today we're hearing more and more cities are using that form of fluoride. We've been having medication forced on us through the water system for quite a while. Most people don't realize it. Most people don't realize the negative effects of fluoride. There's a wide range of health effects that are attributed to fluoride. Bottom line, why should somebody get this new Pro One Pro Pure filter? The reason to buy the Pro One, it's an all in one filter. It's convenient, easy to use. It doesn't require the add on fluoride filter. And in addition, this filter removes the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. Janae Gerard. The really lead plaintiff of six amazing women uh, who sued over having their genes patented and being told they couldn't test uh, for a proclivity to develop certain types of cancer. 
I mean, look, I could ask a lot of questions here. All I can say is I don't get excited about being around a Hollywood star or a sports person who I'm not already, you know, into or whatever just because they're famous or something. To me, being around somebody that took action, did the right thing against the odds and did something for humanity, that is exciting, Janae. Janae Girard, again, is just an example to us all. Where should we start getting into the ruling, what you went through, what happened, what this means? I think maybe a little bit, a little bit of background about, you know, what happened to me and why I took the test. Um, you know, I was in my 30s and basically um, what happened was I took the test after I was diagnosed to try to find out what my odds were. And when you get tested for the BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene, if you, if you test positive for BRCA1, you're at a higher chance of a reoccurrence for breast cancer. If you test positive for BRCA2, then that means you're at a higher risk for not only breast cancer, but ovarian cancer. So when I tested positive for BRCA2 at 38, and I, I was divorced and I hadn't had children, that meant that my biggest odds um, in my favor would be to go ahead and get a double mastectomy and my ovaries out. Well, that's why I wanted the second opinion. But Myriad Laboratory would not run the test again. Um, they, they refused. And so I couldn't get a second opinion. So I had to make decisions, very, you know, life felt decisions based on that one test in my 30s. So that was a really, really big deal. There were other women in the case. Uh, one, they wouldn't accept their, their, her insurance. So she... Uh, she Even if you have the money, they won't take it. I mean, yeah. it, exactly. It's just like, how many... And then they've patented our genes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was just really hard because I was trying to make the best decisions for myself. And, you know, at that time, there were other companies that were able to run the test, including Syracuse University and... But Myriad would slap a cease and desist order on anybody that would run that test. So um, you didn't have many options. Also, what was frustrating... What do they look bad now? <laughs> yeah. The other uh, terrible thing was they were, the uh, Myriad requires you to watch a video. And that video was very forceful on, on you know, scare tactics to try to get you to take the test. So literally, they play this video, and it's horrible. I mean, it's you, you know, it's it's definitely a scare ta tactic. To and they sure lobbied to try to suppress this. I brought up Angelina Jolie to you, mm -hmm. who, who I politically don't you know don't really like. But but the larger issue is why is breast cancer exploding? Why is there never a discussion about that? Why don't we find out what's causing it to increase? Because the genes are there, but it means when this environment changes, the proclivity goes up. Yes, part of it's genes, nature, but most of it is environment and nurture. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree that we're not, I, I don't think our energies are in the right direction, really. I mean, I, I, you know, as somebody that has people that are, you know, dying around them, you know, at young ages, it's very frustrating. Well, it's scary. I've got daughters. I've got a wife. I've got a grandmother who opted not to, she has breast cancer for like the last six, seven years. It's been growing slowly. She op, they pressure her to, you know, do that, but she looked at the numbers and, and talked to her older doctor and decided not to do it. But, you know, it's frightening for men because we love our women. Sure. And, and, and no, you look at the graph, it's going straight up. My daughters, knock on wood, if we don't find out what's doing this, it's the glyphosate. So what do you think is increasing the uh, breast cancer? I think it's a number of things. I mean, the uh, our environment and the just our food sources, um, there's so many different things. Sedimentary lifestyle, um, you know, there, um, it's just, it's a number of things. Growth hormone in the food. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, Bisphenol A, I think, estrogen mimickers. Yeah, oh yeah, big time. I think that the top um, the top version of uh, tumors is ER positive, over eighty eight percent, I believe now. So that that's all estrogen driven. So yeah, when, when girls are going into puberty at seven, it's going to accelerate the aging of the sexual organs. I mean, it's well, we had over two hundred nineteen thousand women diagnosed last year with breast cancer total. So, I mean, that's a huge number. Yeah, I was looking. It's like up 3,000% in the last 50 years. Yeah, it's crazy. But oh, let's never discuss why it's up, though. Mm, I know, I know. So my, my issue is I, I agree with women's right to have things removed if they want to. My issue is they're only pushing that option. They're not saying, let's find out what's doing it. I just, I really believe um, that big pharma plays a huge role in this. And that, um, you know, if you look at how much the oncology drugs are, 
out there. I mean, some of them are over a thousand dollars a vial, you know, just for a 30 ml vial. And if the more and more you look at it, I mean, that's one of the most illegal imported substances over uh, cocaine right now is uh, illegal oncology drugs because they make more money on them. So they'll cut a vial by, you know, a third and add sodium chloride that wouldn't give the patient a, you know, a reaction. And so they, they're bringing those across the border with a holograms that match the, uh, you know, the meaning. Incredible. I want to talk about the court ruling with this hero on the other side, Supreme Court ruling mm -hmm. saying you own your genes. I mean, this is justice. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15 day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the InfoWars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happens. So check it out, InfoWars.com forward slash show. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to get on the march, and we are getting on the march. A couple issues, she didn't even come here to plug this, but it's one of the top uh, breast cancer books out there and it educates people about all this it's off the rack bookstores everywhere off the rack uh, and I commend her for writing that you can uh, follow her on Twitter at Janae Gerard uh, twitter.com forward slash Janae Gerard and she has links to her Facebook right there I mean like Bloomberg's like look he says they're poisoning the water and then he sells water filters duh I mean I'm selling what I believe in what I do personally I mean, look up, just type in Harvard study fluoride, bone cancer, soft tissue cancer, sevenfold increased bone cancer, some of the soft tissue cancers, 15, 20 fold. Go look it up. Type in Harvard study fluoride. Yeah, there it is. Impact of fluoride on neurological development in children. Harvard. You know, we're talking 20 point IQ reductions. Read it. Read it. I'm saying take it out of the water. I'm saying stop these cities. I, I'm I'm ranting. She's going to be on the nightly news tonight to really get into detail on all this. And we've got the whole Supreme Court ruling right here. You've got the floor, uh, Janae. What are the other points people should know about where this is going, what you think's behind it, uh, how big a deal this ruling is, what happened behind the scenes, uh, and just how far reaching this is? Because they say this affects Monsanto, everybody. This is a devastating victory that you've engaged in here. It really is. It, it affects everybody in the country. Um, you know, in the beginning, it was a little bit of a difficult uphill battle to educate everybody on what this was about because no one really believed that, the, that our U.S. government allowed one company to patent a part of the body. But what, what this means is because they declared it unconstitutional, that basically means that, that every other laboratory, every other bio company cannot sit, um, basically patent a gene and make money off of it. Could be because it is a part of the body. So um, it is wide reaching. You know, if you look at Myriad, for example, they, um, they would run 100 tests a day at $3,500. And they banked all of our breast cancer genes since they've been in existence. So, I mean, how does that retard research? You know, I mean, how do we know where instances of breast cancer are popping up? you know, more frequently. Uh, it's just crazy. It's crazy. Monsanto used that, again, to block investigations of what they're go doing. Right, right. Yeah, because when you patent that gene now, nobody can look at it. That's right. Oh, I tell you, well, talk about a cover-up. I mean, yeah, it, it was... Why do you think the Supreme Court did the right thing? They usually do the wrong thing nowadays. <laughs> well, we had our fingers crossed, let me tell you. Um, I, th I think they felt... Uh, I think, honestly, I think they felt a lot of pressure from... Um, from the science community and the medical community especially. And I think they want their kids to get these treatments. Oh yeah, yeah, for, yeah, totally. So I, I think they were feeling a lot of pressure and um, you know, there, there was also, there was a Prometheus case just before this that was similar. And um, so, you know, they, they have to follow precedents. So, uh, you know, I just really think they're feeling a lot of pressure on this one. Especially since there were about, you know, 20 to 22 genes that were in the queue to be patented. So. And again, people go, hey, it's a free market. It's a company. And they didn't patent a treatment for something, which would be fine. And we're all for, you know, funding whatever works. They are patenting your genes, my genes. I agree with that. Um, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. And so if they developed a system to be able to isolate a gene, you could patent that, you know, or trademark that system. That's one thing. 
but they were literally extracting a gene and calling it theirs. And so that, that's the difference. That'd be like if somebody dug up gold and went and patented gold and said, now you can't have it, I own all the gold. Right. Exactly. I mean, it's just, it's asinine. Right. Uh, wow. Uh, but what upset me is I've seen foreign courts and other courts had ruled they could do this. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad it got struck down. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was extremely excited. You know, uh, I, I just, it's been an uphill battle for a lot of women. This opens up the door for more women to be able to get you know, testing done and be able to make wise decisions based on their hereditary disposition, you know, disposition. Mine happens to be where I have cancer that runs in my family. So that's why I got the test originally. But uh, what I, did you decide to do after you did? I went ahead and got a double mastectomy and I went ahead and got a oophorectomy, which is my ovaries out. I know that's a tough decision. I can't say what I, I would do. Uh, you know, my only issue is I'm concerned, though, because there's a double-edged sword. There's other lobbies in big medical that are now going to use this, you know, to scare women that have had the test. And like you said, their video was scary. And then, again, it'll all be about mitigating things instead of asking. Because I understand that you're predisposed to the genetics, but it's other things that then turn that on and accelerate that. Because people have the genetics you had before, and this wasn't happening in anywhere near these numbers. So my concern is that, okay, now we say we own our genes. This is a big victory. But now they're just going to move in and make money the other way. Uh, it's, it's just, I mean, I mean, I want to like reverse this. I don't want to find the cure, which they're never going to really find. I want to find why it's happening and stop it. I agree with you. I'd rather do that than throw drugs at it. You know, I mean, let's figure out what's causing these issues and go after it. I mean, I've got, I've got people in, in my group, my breast cancer group that are marathon runners that have been in shape and eating well all of their lives. And like they're coming down with it, you know, in their twenties and thirties. It's 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 a total epidemic. It's crazy. Yeah, you can again. There's different types of breast cancers, obviously, but mm -hmm. three thousand percent increase in the last fifty something years is a low number. I mean, some pediatric cancers are up over ten thousand mm -hmm. percent, and kids didn't used to get cancer. Now it's epidemic. And then you go to third world countries. None of them have this in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it's 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 a we know it's the glyphosates literally turn on cancer. Uh, I mean, it's uh, it's amazing, all the studies on that. Then you add, add in the fluoride and the toxins and the GMO. Well, there's another problem, too, that people don't talk about. The doctors push the tests. So the doctors were pushing the myriad tests without any other options. So they weren't behind changing it either. Oh, they're making money. Yeah. So that was a big problem. <laughs> it's disgusting. It is. It's disgusting. I mean, it, my dad, you know, went to medical school, and they were told you're supposed to give a third of your services for free. There's no government involved. Mm -hmm. You just do that. And now most doctors don't do that. And then he's the type of minority doctor that does, so he has lines around the block. And then you know, he tries to get clinics, and people give him discounts to help poor people. They just won't do it. It's so cold-blooded. Yeah, it is. It is. And, and to think, too, like a number of the women that I know that were, um, you know, trying to get the test run that didn't have insurance— they're sitting around waiting to try to, you know, get a, a grant or something like that. And I mean, that's ridiculous. You don't have time to, you know, sit around and wait when you have cancer to try to make decisions. I'm surprised there hasn't been a move politically to destroy the stock of that company as a political protest. Because, you know, it, it, that would be a good lesson to these, these you know, like Bayer Pharmaceutical that knowingly had HIV and hepatitis and the factor eight, you know, hundreds mm -hmm. of thousands of people ended up getting it and dying. I know. And they didn't get in trouble. I mean, these, these companies are sick. Yeah. These are sick people. Yeah, they really are. Yep. I've had firsthand experience. <laughs> and then if there's no charity out there or no goodwill, just pure greed, then the government comes in as the charity group, but they're run by the same people. Yeah. Exactly. It's like there's no way out. Well, you're going to go to the nightly news here, uh, and, and, and after you walk out of this live radio show, you'll probably think, oh, I wish I would have covered that. What else do you want to impart to people? I just want people to know that, um, you know, to stay aware and to, you know, to listen and really pay attention to what's going on. Because, you know, a number of people um, weren't paying attention to what was going on in their own medical community. And and uh, they were shocked by the Supreme Court ruling. They had no idea what was going on. And so just to really stay educated about what is going on and stay on the pulse with shows like yours, you know, that where they can see what's going on and make a difference. They can speak out and they can, you know, rustle feathers and create a ruckus. So I think that's mm -hmm. very important. People people don't need to be sheeple. They need to get out there and, and make a difference. 
to understand the magnitude of this case, because I want to get briefly into some of the other aspects that you've talked about with the lawyers and, and, and all the hundreds of uh, amicus briefs that were brought in by medical groups and people that really want to move things forward. If you patent a gene, you lock down all of the research around that gene and treatments and things, which, again, the insiders are still going to move to an offshore base like uh, Singapore, which they've been doing, and only use it for themselves. But it's good to see progress went out. You know, the genie's out of the bottle. People... That's my hope. People are really going to demand progress, and that's what's going to lead us into a cleaner industrial age, you know, lead us to the stars. I mean, that's the answer is, is in the stars and that greater potential. I mean, that's, that's what I fear, not my own physical death. I fear the death of the species or not reaching that incredible potential. I, I just have a dream for everybody else that's going to come after us, like my ancestors uh, had a dream. But you have helped by taking action. One of the first people to you know call for this. I know you don't like to brag about yourself, but helping initiate a lot of this. If, if you wouldn't have done this, they would have probably gotten some bad case law and gone. This is this is a big deal that now we can study genes and 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 try to help people instead of these companies locking them down for themselves. That that is. It's not even about them saying we own the gene. It's about saying nobody else can look at this. That that is. That is a war against progress. It's a monopoly. <laughs> it's a total monopoly. It's a monopoly of the human body. That's a huge uh, ruling. Yes. Have you had a chance to read it all yet? I've read some of it. You know, I've, I've read quite a bit of it. A lot of it's legal jargon that <laughs> is a little out there, but... Um, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. I've read the synopses and talked to some of the constitutional lawyers. They say it's good. Yeah. And I was really surprised. I was looking for some sneakiness in there. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, everybody at the Supreme Court and the government, everybody else and the NSA, you're going to destroy all our futures if you don't start doing the right thing on every front. Okay? That's what we need to do. And stop letting fat cat monopoly insiders ruin our world through fraud. I'm all for profit. I'm a libertarian. But these people are the opposite of that. They, they are the problem. Yeah. What are you going to talk about on the nightly news tonight, Janae? Well, I just, I'd like to talk about the ruling, but I'd also like to talk a little bit about my experience and how it affected me and, um, and how it affects, you know, all women and, um, and just how excited we are and how, how the change is going to come down the pipeline, what that looks like. <laughs> Yeah, I don't feel like I should apologize to uh, Angelina Jolie, but 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 almost seeing the press coverage of her, you know, you know, some people saying, "Hey, she's working. You might be working with these companies trying to make money." I I never went there, but it's almost like I get mad at her because of some of the things she's done, being a warmonger in the name of peace and pushing globalist agendas. Maybe she's a useful idiot. But then I look at what it would take. I don't think it would would be a lobbying or money issue, and there was no evidence of that, for her to have her breasts removed. I think that shows with her mother dying young at 50-something, the horror a woman's going through of, you're going to probably, you know, 90% chance or whatever, get this cancer and going and doing that. Yeah, it's it's definitely fear-driven, and uh, and I believe it's a, a very personal choice, you know, per situation, per woman, to make that decision. Um but yeah, the fear when you've got multiple, you know, people in your family that have been diagnosed, it's uh, it's pretty scary because you sometimes you can live day to day just you know dreading. Some people uh, decide to get more um, proactive about mm -hmm. getting their you know tests, like their mammography and things like that. And then some people just say, "Well, that's been linked to causing it too." Oh, and, yeah. Well, but some people just say, "Hey, I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to deal with the fear, and this will reduce my." Yeah, you know, my chances by a significant amount. You said that they fear mongered, you know, in that video that they make you watch before you get the test. Knowing what you know now, would your decisions have been any different than now? Probably not. I'm pretty confident in the decisions that I made. Yeah. I tell you, it's, 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 again, my wife's mother had breast cancer and she's got it in her family. And it really is horrifying. It's like a grim reaper hanging over your head. That, you know, uh, and, and again, it's happening to men with testicular cancer, other things, mm -hmm. and everybody's just dying and getting sick. I mean, I, here's the deal. I've got all the documents. They're doing this on purpose. Let me just give you the big inside scoop. And it's, the, it's, it's, it's slow genocide. If the Nazis mowed somebody down, um, you know, people learn to resist. But if it's slow and then they make money in the whole Rockefeller medical system off sucking it out of you during the process... This is how they're taking over society. And uh, I, I, I'm sure you've heard about the medical experiments, the secret stuff the government's mm -hmm. done. You know, the, the, I mean, there's some well-known stuff I talk about 
atomic soldiers, foster kids getting radiated, black men, syphilis, mm -hmm. Tuskegee. But that's nothing. I mean, those are horrible cases, but nothing compared to larger programs. Mm -hmm. Like they ordered 220-something chemical weapons dumps blown up in Iraq mm -hmm. and told everybody, take your mask off. Because they knew the detectors were going to go off. Because they couldn't control the bureaucracy of the army. But they still ordered it and tell them, oh, it's a false alarm. And then... Some numbers are 50 plus thousand troops have died from them. They've done autopsies. It's nerve gas. Mm -hmm. Now, why would they want to do that to our troops? If it just, well, why? Yeah. I mean, why would they say, take your mask off? Why would they tell them it's safe around the World Trade Center? You know, don't worry, don't wear a breathing apparatus. Of course, I wouldn't believe the government. I said at the time, I, I said, send to a local church respirators day one. People are like, oh, shut up. Government says we don't need it. Why would they tell the firefighters and police it was safe? Because there's too many of us, you see. They see us as roaches. And I say, they're the roaches. They're the roaches that would act like this and do this to people. And I know what they're doing. And we've just got to get over the point and realize that pediatric cancer did not exist. It was like they'd fly doctors all over the country to find a kid with cancer in the 50s. Yeah. It's everywhere now. Well, and I think what people don't understand, instead of calling people survivors, I call them veterans. Because the stuff that we go through is like war. I mean, surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, they poison you within one eighth of your body weight of death. You know, it's like, I mean, the stuff that we go through, it's like, it's, it's unbelievable that we even have, you know, are able to, uh, to live you know, mentally, what we go through is... How about we bring them to justice? I have a book over there called Eco Science by the White House Science Art. Do you know what it says in there? Mm -mm says, let's put stuff in the water to reduce population and sterilize people. Oh, See, right. he's not a very nice person. That's what I'm saying. We have to get to the next level of horror. We have to admit this program of soft kill is going on. And then they also just don't care. Other bad stuff going on, they just let it happen. Like our government has thrown over 100 nuclear reactors in the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Georgia and Alabama. Did you know that? Mm-mm. Yeah, just, they just throw reactors in the ocean. They're crazy people. You're going on the nightly news. Uh, Janae, Gerard, you're a hero. Thank you for having the courage to fight. And it paid off. You're an example to us all. Thank you so much. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.